Manhattan Beach, which oddly enough is in Brooklyn, may be found many outdoor activities each summer besides bathing. But its most interesting experiment to date, and one it may proudly boast about, is an auxiliary life-saving corps made up entirely of young women, whose duty it is to assist the regular guard patrol in their watchful work of protecting the lives of the public. To the Office of Recreation Manager, Mr. Clear B, come hundreds of young applicants, all anxious to join the seaside service. After a careful check as to general health and athletic ability, those selected for a tryout are taken to the medical station and given a thorough physical examination by the beach doctor. For the preliminary tests, as well as the training later, will be extremely strenuous. And now those who have passed the medical examination are lined up on the beach and inspected soldier-like by Chief Lifeguard Lou Phipps and Captain Madeline Carson, head of the girls' unit. In the first preliminary test, each applicant must swim from the shore to the lifeguard boat, a distance of about 150 yards against wave and tide. She is timed and marked for speed and style by examiners from the Guard Patrol and Life Saving Corps. To show she is not exhausted and to prove her endurance, without stopping for any rest, she must make a surface dive to the bottom, a depth here of about 20 feet. For evidence, she brings up a handful of sand. Among other tests, rowing, of course, is important. Though the lifeguard boat is heavy, it is necessary to demonstrate they can master it upon all occasions. Exhaustive tests have eliminated many, but those that remain are now ready to take the training. Instructions begin with the proper method of breaking various holes, such as the front strangle for a drowning person will grab anywhere and hold on for dear life. Another dangerous hold is the double wrist lock, which must be broken in a firm manner, for otherwise the rescuer would go down with the victim. Two people locked in each other's arms also present a serious problem, unless efficiently handled. After a hold is broken, the right method of water carry requires one arm to be kept free for swimming. And now the girls are shown the right way to carry and to pass a drowning victim from one guard to another, known as the Pony Express. The victim is held firmly and securely to prevent slipping or falling, yet at the same time as gently and comfortably as possible under the circumstances. Artificial respiration is an important factor in life-saving. Here, the use of an inhalator in connection with the prone pressure method is demonstrated. Resuscitation by relay is necessary, for it sometimes takes many hours without pause to start the victim breathing again. The girls now carefully watch how a victim is placed upon a stretcher, always held so that the entire body remains in a horizontal position. And so the training goes on day after day without let up, watching, learning, practicing on one another, gradually becoming confident of their own ability. Lined up in company formation, the girls are ready for their daily drill. Four are selected to man the lifeboat, a job they seem to relish, judging by the speed they make for the water. And necessary it is, too, for the element of time is always important to a lifeguard. More practice, this time in deep water. She throws out the anchor to hold the boat in position, dives overboard, and rapidly swims toward a make-believe victim holding her head high so as not to lose sight of the subject. By an underwater approach, 
She turns the victim round by the knees, holds her by chin and chest with one arm, swims back to the boat with the other. Every morning, the troop assemble and take their swimming exercise, a distance of half a mile at a speed set by the leader. Yet the mermaids seem remarkably fresh at the finish. Father Neptune may call upon his daughters to perform. 